Bet you never thought you'd see a tutorial from me again, huh? All right, so welcome back everybody. It has been a little bit of time and uh, I really have no explanation for that other than that. I've just, I've just been kind of lazy lately. That's it really. But anyway, I wanted to get back into it today with something that's super fast and easy to grasp. It's just straight to the point since I know you guys love my tutorials that are just right to the point. So that's gonna be slow motion, that really nice slow motion. And I'm just gonna tell you straight off how to do it. You can leave right after that, that's all you need to know. Or you can watch a little bit as I try to explain it. But I'm gonna warn you right now, the explanation is not the best I've tried. Uh, so this is this is how I'll try to explain it and teach it to you guys. For frame rates, you have a few options you can choose from. There's ones like 24 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and 120 frames per second 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second are usually considered slow motion so if you want to shoot good slow motion make sure your camera can shoot in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second 60 frames being standard most cameras can do that now 120 frames per second a lot of cameras can still do it but not all cameras can do it that well i know my camera the sony a6300 can do it at 10 full at 1080p and actually comes out really clean um, some other cameras do it at 720, some don't do it at all. Anyway, pick either 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second to use. Um, and you can do that in your menu. If you have questions about where to actually find these settings in your menu for a Sony, I can help you out with that because I do have a Sony. Um, so I'll leave written instructions for that down below. For Canon, I don't really know. I don't, I don't shoot Canon. It should be pretty simple. So pick one of those frame rates, probably 60 or 120 frames. And then what you have to do after that is make sure your shutter speed matches. There's this thing called the 180 degree rule, which basically means that whatever your frame rate is, your shutter speed has to be double. So if it was 24 frames per second, it would have to be 48 or on a DSLR. 50 or 1 over 50 and if it's 60 frames per second you'd have to do 1 over 120 frame um yeah 1 over 120 and if it was 120 frames per second your shutter speed would have to be two uh 1 over 250 because that's double or it would be double that's like the double on a dslr kind of rounds up for whatever reason so those are the numbers you'll be seeing for your shutter speed that's actually really important because that's going to incorporate the right amount of motion blur for these clips so that way when you play them back they don't look like so choppy and or they they look right or they're not like playing really slow if you've ever experimented with your shutter speed on your camera and you put it really high you'll notice it's like it's just really like it's really choppy it's like really like sharp and then if you've ever brought it too low, it's just like really laggy and delayed. And that's because there's just either too much motion blur or not enough motion blur. Yeah. So, you know, experiment with that stuff someday. But for now, keep it to the 180 rule. Um, that's with shooting anything, not even slow motion too. Even if you're just shooting regularly, um, 24 frames per second or whatever, 30 frames per second, always make sure your shutter speed's double. That rule is super important. Um, you can break it, but I would recommend not doing it unless you have a purpose for it or you understand why you are doing it. And uh, yeah, that is how you shoot slow motion the right way, the right settings. A lot of people, especially beginners I've seen, will just shoot whatever straight out of their cameras, whether it's 30 frames per second or if it's on auto or if it's in 24 frames per second and they, they just record and then they go back in their computer later and they try to slow it down and it comes out really choppy. And that's just not the right way to do it. So make sure you're going into your camera settings, putting things on manual if you want to do this because I, that's how you you really need to adjust these settings and make sure that you're you manually adjust your frame rates and your shutter speed and then you can shoot slow motion the right way anyway that's it that's literally the most straightforward thing ever i could have possibly done for slow motion uh i was going to continue with why slow motion was the way it was and all these frame rate things but I j i've tried so many times to explain it and it just it just doesn't come out the right way when I try to think of it. So I'm gonna maybe talk about that stuff another day about explaining frame rates. But for now, just know this is how you can do slow motion. And if you really have some questions about, you know, why it is that way and frame rates and stuff like that, message me and I will really, or like leave a comment or something and I will really work hard on trying to explain frame rates. But I just I just can't right now. I've, I've, like I have a script. I have scripts that I write for my videos just like to keep plot points. And I've tried to think it out and it's just not working out for me. So. And I think I'm just going to not, I'm going to save myself the trouble of spending 10 hours of editing to make something make sense for you guys and just end it here. So if, you, if this was helpful to you, make sure you like this video, comment if you have any questions about how to shoot slow motion from what I've given you, um, or if you want a little bit more explanation, subscribe to this channel. If you want to see more content, I'm going to be posting, you know, I'm not even making any more promises because 
my schedule so irregular. Just know there's gonna be another video sometime. Not sure what it's gonna be or when, but it's gonna come. So until next time, guys, I'll see you then. All right, peace out. <laughs>